you know, sometimes life can be stranger than fiction. And it certainly is the case here. Chicago in the 1920s was in the grip of Prohibition and Al Capone. His game was crime and it paid well. The authorities were unable to secure sufficient and reliable evidence to take any legal action against Capone. He had a lawyer named Easy Eddie. He was Capone's lawyer for good reason. Eddie was very good. To show his appreciation, Capone paid him well. Not only was the money big, but Eddie got special benefits as well. For instance, he and his family occupied a fenced-in mansion so large it filled an entire Chicago city block. Eddie lived the high life of the Chicago mob and gave little consideration to how the mob controlled the vices that made so much money. But Eddie did have one soft spot. He had a son that he loved dearly. Eddie saw to it that his young son had a good education, the best of everything, taken anywhere, nothing was withheld. Despite his involvement with organised crime, Eddie even tried to teach him right from wrong. Eddie wanted his son to be a better man than he was. Yet, with all his wealth and influence, there were two things he couldn't give his son. He couldn't pass on a good name. One day, Easy Eddie reached a difficult decision. He wanted to rectify wrongs he had done. He decided he would go to the authorities and tell the truth about El Scarface Capone clean up his tarnished name and gain some resemblance of integrity as an example to his son. To do this he would have to testify against the mob and he knew that the cost would be great so he testified. The detail of that testimony is more fully covered in Collier's magazine 1947 Easy Eddie written by F.J. Wilson Department of Treasury to whom Easy Eddie became informant. Capone was finally convicted of taxation evasion but not for bootlegging, prostitution or murder. He was sentenced to 11 years imprisonment and was released after serving seven years. But a week before he was released from Alcatraz prison, Easy Eddie's life ended on November 8th, 1939, in a blaze of gunfire on a lonely Chicago street. But in his eyes, he had given his son the greatest gift he had to offer at the greatest price he could ever pay. Police removed from his pockets a rosary, a crucifix, a religious medal and a poem clipped from a magazine. The poem read, The clock of life is wound but once, and no man has the power to tell just when the hands will stop at late or early hour. Now is the only time you own. Live, love, toil with a will. Place no faith in time, for the clock may soon be still. As for L. Scarface Capone, he went on to reside in relative comfort he was in poor health and died of a heart attack and stroke in 1947. World War II produced many heroes. One such man was Lieutenant Commander Butch O'Hare. He was a fighter pilot assigned to aircraft carrier Lexington in the South Pacific. Later that month, the Lexington took her air group to the South Pacific to strike at Rabaul. However, the task force was detected by the Japanese and 17 land-based Betty bombers were sent to deal with it. Radar on board the Lexington discovered the approaching bombers, and Lieutenant Commander Jimmy Thatch's Wildcats from VF-3 were launched to greet them. During the interception, Lieutenant Edward Butch O'Hare became the Navy's first ace of World War II. Butch O'Hare was a graduate of the Naval Academy and had been assigned to VF-3 in 1940. He was an experienced carrier pilot and a very good shot. When Lieutenant Commander Ito's squadron began their attack on the Lexington, O'Hare and his wingman were directed to intercept them and dove into the attack. With expert marksmanship, O'Hare dispatched his targets one by one. He shot down three bombers and mortally wounded two others. His final victim, Lieutenant Commander Ito's lead bomber, already trailing smoke, tried desperately to reach its target, but finally fell to the Lexington's anti-aircraft guns. This dramatic aerial battle took place in view of those on board the carrier. For this action, O'Hare was awarded the Medal of Honor. Promoted to Lieutenant Commander, O'Hare returned to combat in 1943. No enemy bombs made it to the Lexington. The Medal of Honor citation calls it one of the most daring single action in the history of combat aviation. Upon his arrival, a film from the gun camera mounted on his plane told the tale. It showed the extent of Butcher's daring attempt to protect his fleet. 
For that action, Butch became the US Navy's first ace of World War II and the first naval aviator to win the Medal of Honor. As carrier air group commander on board the Enterprise, he was instrumental in developing combined night fighter tactics. O'Hare was killed during a night interception of a Betty bomber approaching the Enterprise. That was in November 1943 at the Battle of Gilbert Islands in the South Pacific. He was accidentally shot down by another US fighter. His hometown would not allow the memory of this World War II hero to fade. And today O'Hare Airport in Chicago is named in tribute to the courage of this great man. So if you should be at O'Hare International, there is a memorial displaying his statue and his Medal of Honor located between Terminal 1 and 2. So what have these two stories got to do with each other? Well, remarkably, Butch O'Hare, a national hero, was the son of Easy Eddie.